Is the World Bank has approved $750 million credit support for Nigeria's power sector, saying that the country loses about $28 billion annually to power shortages. Meanwhile, the Senate Investigation Committee on Power has reported that only two of the six power generation companies, Jenkos in Nigeria, are meeting targets. The two are Transco Power and Gerigu Power. In a statement announcing the support, the World Bank said the loan titled Power Sector Recovery Operation of Seven. $150 million is to improve the reliability of electricity supply, achieve financial and fiscal sustainability, and enhance uh, accountability in Nigeria's power sector. However, the bank stated, and I quote, about 47% of Nigerians do not have access to grid electricity, and those who do have access face regular power cuts. In addition, the economic cost of power shortages in Nigeria is estimated at around $28 billion, equivalent to 2% of his gross domestic product. Joining us live is Ifi Malu from Abuja, a power sector policy expert. And also joining in the conversation is Elizabeth Baine Amisa. She will be speaking Ghana. She's an expert on power, also power sector industry expert. Good morning, Ifi and Elizabeth. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, if he is joining us via phone while we have Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth, uh, let's go to you. We, we, read of, uh, we read of a recent commitment to a loan uh, to the past sector uh, on the right path. But as a policy expert, is this what is needed? I know this is for Nigeria, but looking at it uh, generally, is it a good step? Are we in the right uh, direction? So I'll say that um, I've covered West Africa broadly over the last 12 years, and I would say capital is not the issue. I think it's as, as, as important of getting a commitment on money as it is about coordinating the drivers of the sector. And so there has to be a definitive commitment to make sure you coordinate fuel supply, infrastructure investment in the actual transmission and distribution, as well as generation. I think historically, there has been an over focus on generation, but once you generate the electrons, where do they go? So I'll say yes, net positive, but it will be very important on how we structure um, the sector in terms of looking at generation, transmission, distribution, um, and how to make sure that the, we're, we're financing these at favorable terms so you get value for money and the tariffs will be able to be cost recovery. All right. Let's, let's speak to Ify now. Ify, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Now, what are the fundamental failings of our power sector? Let's bring it home to Nigeria, such that from one administration to the next, we can't seem to get it right. Um, I think uh, there are three key things. One of them is the fact that we haven't done, and for the longest time, and it's just beginning to happen now, we haven't had an integrated energy planning the way that we've had in several other countries. Um, when we talk about what the failures are, you know, in Nigeria, it was state owned for many years, then we went through a privatization, and then that privatization was, you know, depending on who you talk to, semi successful, but there are still bottlenecks, there's still fundamental issues that need to be unlocked or that need to be addressed within that privatization structure, where we, we divided the state owned entity to discos, genkos, and transmissions. And the transmission was not privatized, so it's still partly. Um, state owned and the discos are now dealing with historical legacy issues and debts you know that had been with us for about 40 years and that they're still trying to sort of grapple around because they are owned by new people um, some of them who don't have any history around the power sector or don't have that same level of um, expertise, expertise uh, around the power sector um, so it's debt crippling you know like there's all this debt uh, you know, going from who's supposed to pay for what, um, that continues to cripple how, you know, capital is flowing through the system. Um, there's a lack of cost-reflective tariff. We know that that's about to change. And so we're, we're eager to see how that's going to sort of uh, improve things. And I think the third thing is actually also, because I think it's important to say this, you know, there's low trust also. Nigerians for so many years have been told that they would get electricity by you know, 1980, 1990, 2000, and they never did. So you find that electricity theft has become so pervasive in the way that people 
view electricity, they see it as a social service because they're paying for services or they're paying for, for things that they don't see. So these, it's a multifaceted issue and, you know, it's going to take a bit of time to sort of unlock each step of the barrier. Let me go to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, for the most part, you cover, you know, other African countries. Uh, do you see the issues, some of these issues raised by IFI as also being uh, the same in other countries other than Nigeria? Oh, yes, definitely. And I can speak as a Ghanaian. I've, I've worked extensively in Ghana. There's a general perception that Ghana has got it together. And we have had some good wins. We have prepaid meters in terms of enacting policy and trying to work on it, I think we've moved forward, but we have the same challenges. We have a non-cost reflective tariff. And because of that, we are grow our debt in the sector is growing. We tried to restructure um, that debt with the ESLA bond a few years ago, but it's still running. You see now we have a problem with the Sankofa gas field. Um, these take or pay agreements where you still have to pay a capacity charge if the commodity is available, whether it's gas or electricity, is really drowning us. So the same tenants that, that plague Nigeria, we see in other places. And to that, and to that sense, I think traditional project finance as it's set up in its pure form might not actually work very well in the Africa setting. All right, let me also add to that. What has worked for Ghana so far? So I will say Ghana, um, we historically started with a hydro project, um, the Volta River uh, of Florian Volta Lake, the creation of Volta Lake, Okoso Bo Dam. So we have a long amortized hydro uh, asset that serves as base load. And it was tied to industry. It was tied to an aluminum smelter. And so historically, we had a vertically integrated utility. Uh, ECG and uh, Gridco were spun out of that. And so I think we have a good base for power generation, I think where we struggle is, you know, we deregulated the market in the mid 2000s. Um, we have enacted policy, but there is no um, set way that we're we are procuring supply, and so the supply and demand forecasts don't always sync up. And after the power crisis in 2012, we have actually over. Uh, contracted power now, so we have oversupply, but there's still challenges on the fuel side as well as a high generation tariff that is not reflected in the, the tariff that goes to the consumer. Hmm. All right, um, if you can hear Elizabeth saying there that they have oversupply, uh, what can we do now that we've gotten a loan? Uh, how best can this be applied to see that we get better results from what we've been experiencing in, in Nigeria as far as electricity is concerned? I think, um, and I have to echo what Elizabeth said, loans by themselves are not necessarily bad. Having more capital into the system is actually a good thing. Um, however, unless we're able to have that integrated, um, you know, energy planning, where similar to what Ghana has done, look at how to get electricity first, sometimes to those who can pay, make it cost reflective, um, get it to those who can pay. So have... Uh, um, a supply chain that has, is actually serving industries um, as customers and then have it also, you know, just have uh, the other part that is also serving homes and residences. I think that would actually really help. The other thing is also transparency across the system. I mean, you know, one of the things that we've struggled with in Nigeria is we get all of this capital, uh, whether there's been loans or grants or, you know, there's a lot of development uh, funding that has come into the Nigerian power sector over time. Um, but we haven't quite created a, a monitoring and evaluation framework that's actually helping us see and tracking how that money is spent and whether it's being spent in the best way possible that, mm. that is, you know, benefiting the entire country. All right. If you... Um, I have one minute to split between both of you, uh, which is, and I'm going to ask you one question. So since you're on the line, if you work in Nigeria and Ghana, learn from each other. I'm going to say, you know, one of the things that I, I want to see happen in Nigeria is how we use some of this money to build local capacity. I think, you know, building local capacity is key uh, mm -hmm. across Africa, you know, especially in the electricity sector. Right. We have so much local talent in our individual countries and we need to harness it. And this goes beyond even the donor agencies, as, you know, as uh, we've, already, we've already mentioned. We need people who actually can manage our electricity value chain. Um, and that can actually use that talent to sort of get 
electricity to the most hard to reach, those who are on the fringes of society. All right, so Elizabeth because, now. I'm sorry, Ife. Elizabeth, your final thoughts on that. Where can Ghana I, and Nigeria I, learn from each other? I have the same answer. If you and I are one brain, I think <laughs> what Ghana can learn from Nigeria actually is local participation. Okay. So even though the NIPP process was complicated and the discos also are complicated, the fact that local uh, local capital from local banks was part of that and you have local ownership, we have a long way to go in Ghana to be able to emulate that. So giving merits to Nigeria, we, have, we can learn from that for sure. All right. Thank you so very much, both of you, for that excellent conversation. Ifi Malo, do stay safe out there. And Elizabeth, also, thank you very much and keep safe thank out you. there in Ghana. Thank you. Thank All you. Right.